Hey there, welcome to the second episode in the Refresh Your Year series. Now in the first episode, episode 72, that was all about aligning your values with your goals so your goals will be meaningful and fulfilling. I mean, isn't that the point of them? <laughs> so yeah, if you haven't heard it yet, make sure you go back to episode 72 and listen to that. Today I am talking about tweaking your perspective on your midlife goals. By midlife, you have more than likely set some goals and didn't hit them. You just didn't hit them. And that's okay. We've all done it. But you know, when we miss our goals, sometimes we don't generally understand why we miss them. We don't understand why it didn't work or why the goal was out of reach. Let me tell you, you, my friend, can hit your goals. And I am going to give you a tip today that is deceptively simple yet so very, very effective. It sets you up for success, it's easy, it's encouraging, and it keeps your excitement and your momentum up while you're going after your goals. And that's exactly what you need. Let's make the process fun. What do you say? Woohoo! All right, you ready to go? You ready to find out what this tip is? Oh my goodness, I am so excited to tell you. Let's do this. Hey there, welcome to the Easy Aging Show. My name is Michelle Zavala and I'm your easy aging expert. Each week, I'll bring you tips and strategies that will energize you as you take small, fun-sized actions to upgrade your mindset and get clarity on who you are and what you truly want. With this, you'll have the freedom to go after your dreams and start reveling in the juicy moments of midlife that make your heart sing. So grab a cup of joe or a glass of the red and kick back because your glory days are just getting started. Hey there, Easy Ager. If you are not already an Easy Aging Insider, go to theeasyagingshow.com right after this episode and sign up today. All right, y'all, I, <laughs> I have got to tell you, I absolutely love, love, love the tip I'm going to be giving you for midlife goal setting today. Because as a former, air quote, beat yourself up when you don't achieve your goals person, oh my goodness, it was such a relief to finally have this tip to help me get over that hump. You know, I tried to hit the goal, and I was, Ugh, can't get over it. I changed my perspective. I added this little tip to my goal setting and now whoop, got over the hump. There's another hump. Boop, got over that one too. When I decided that I wanted to be a person who consistently hit her goals, I started doing a little research. I started playing with a few things. I started going back and forth and back and forth. I discovered this simple little tweak that has helped me dramatically. Before I give you this tip, I want to say something. You cannot be a failure. It just doesn't exist. You can fail and failure is an event. It's an event where you just didn't achieve the goal or the expectation. And that's it. I mean, seriously, that, that's it. I mean, you get to be the one to put the meaning on it. Now, episode eight, go back to episode eight if you have not heard it yet. Episode eight is all about how we select the meanings for things that happen in our lives. You get to choose. So if you're going to choose a meaning for something that happened, why don't you choose a meaning that benefits you? I mean, it'd be kind of crazy not to, right? So go back to episode eight if you haven't heard it yet. It talks all about the meanings we attach to things. And because we all, as human beings, attach meanings to things, that means you get to choose how you react when you didn't achieve a goal. You can beat yourself up and call yourself a failure, or you can choose a meaning that benefits you. For example, something doesn't work out, you could just chalk it up to, hey, guess what? I learned something new. I discovered a way that doesn't work. <laughs> you know, beating yourself up is no value whatsoever. Give yourself a little pat on the back. You tried, you gave it your best shot, and maybe you hit the goal, maybe you didn't. But the reality of all of this is you're out there and you're doing and you're taking action. Friend, I am so confident that you do have the ability to achieve your goals. What you probably don't have is this little tip I'm about to give you. Yeah, I'm getting closer. Don't worry. Stay with me. It's so simple. You don't even have to write it down. So you ready? All right. When you're setting a goal, especially if it's a long-term goal, like losing weight or creating a new habit, this type of stuff, cut the goal in half. Now, at this point, I can feel you rolling your eyes saying, "Ugh, Michelle, really? Seriously, that's just a mind trick. And I'm going to say, yes, 
Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Sometimes we have to trick our brains into playing the game with us instead of against us. Bullying yourself going into that negative spiral of thought, all of that type of stuff is just playing the game against yourself. So when you cut your goals in half, you're playing the game for yourself. You're doing something really positive for yourself. So let me give you an example of how cutting your goal in half works. Let's say you want to lose 50 pounds in six months. And at the end of that six months, you only lost 38. This is the point where you have a choice. Now we're moving into the meanings we attach to events in our lives portion of the program. You get to choose the meaning you attach to this. You can either celebrate the 38 pounds that you lost, or you can beat yourself up about the 12 pounds that are still on your body. Cutting the goal in half absolutely changed my perspective on things. So let's cut the same goal in half. Instead of 50 pounds, your goal is now to lose 25 pounds in six months. But did you do that? No. Instead of losing 25 pounds in six months, you lost 38 pounds. Hello? How amazing does that feel? You didn't just achieve your goal. You blew it out of the water. I can guarantee you that if you got a goal like that, you would be all over the place. You'd be posting it on social media. You'd be texting and calling your friends. You'd be telling everybody at church or your synagogue or wherever you are. You would be going on and on about how excited you are and how proud you are of yourself. Now, you know this is true. Don't act like you wouldn't, all right? So let's take that same situation and look at it a little bit differently. You say, I lost 38 pounds, blew my goal out of the water, and what do I have left? 12 pounds. Oh, please, that's easy after losing the 38. That is so simple. You've proven to yourself you can lose 38, so 12 should be a piece of cake. No pun intended. And even if you cut that 12 in half by saying, in 30 days, I'm going to lose 6 pounds. And maybe in 30 days, you lose 8 or 10 pounds too. Who knows? This is all about getting your brain in the right place to get excited and to get some momentum. Your mindset when you're setting goals or going after your dreams or to create a new lifestyle habit, whatever you're doing, you have got to get yourself focused on the good. Find the good out there. Now, I know some of you right now are kind of saying, yeah, that doesn't really work. Let me give you some information from a book called Finished by John Acuff. He says, and I quote, those who cut their goal in half increase their performance from past similar goal-related challenges on an average by over 63%. Not only that, 90% of the people who cut their goal in half said they had an increased desire to work on their goal. It encouraged them to keep going. It motivated them to work harder because the goal seemed attainable. End quote. Isn't that crazy? You cut your goal in half, you increase your performance by 63%. And then you could be one of the 90% who actually get excited about your goal because you're seeing some progress. You're with the momentum. You're going with it. And that is what this is all about. I love cutting goals in half, but you know what I love even more? Fun-sized actions. You know me. If you've listened for even a little bit, <laughs> you know that I'm all about the fun-sized action. And this is a great little fun-sized action for you to start thinking about as you're setting your values-based goals for the year. I adore this so much. This has been such a fantastic revelation just to get new perspectives on goals and to go with fun-sized actions. That way you don't go into overwhelm or get kind of depressed because you're not seeing the momentum that you want. And let me tell you, the celebration at the end of your six months or three months or two weeks or whatever you're doing, that celebration is going to feel so good that you are just going to be ready to set that next goal. Cut those goals in half Take that little fun-sized action, hit the goal, take another fun-sized action, hit the next one and the next one and the next one. Who knows where you're going to be at the end of all this? So that's it for today. When in doubt, cut your goals in half. Pretty simple and pretty easy, huh? Once again, if you are not already an Easy Aging Insider, go to theeasyagingshow.com right now and sign up. I'll see you in the next episode. And until then, peace, love, and blessings to you and yours. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for listening today. If this show has helped or encouraged you, the number one way you can thank me is to leave a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. You'll find directions on how to do this at theeasyagingshow.com. 
And to connect with other Easy Agers, come on over to my free Facebook group, Easy Aging for the Baby Boomer and Gen X Years. See you there.